Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's Teela's Big Day. Oh my God. Teela's Big Day. So we're gonna talk about Masters of the Universe Revelation. I, I did not have any desire to see it, but we got up extra early this morning to watch it and get it out of the way because I felt like we had to have a coda to this whole situation. Right, now I, and full disclosure, I only saw like maybe about half of the show because I had to be somewhere. That's why we got extra early because I had to leave. But Neon watched the entire thing. And I was kept updated with his comments the whole way through. I should pull up some of the ones on the phone as you as you sent them. Yeah, I was commenting on Twitter. I think Twitter you were doing a lot in real time too. I was doing it in real time. Yeah, I was. So I, I, have, I have thoughts. I have thoughts. There are plenty of spoilers in this video. If you have not seen the show and you don't want spoilers, don't watch the video. Uh, apparently, you know, we were spoiling the show a year and a half ago and- Yeah, we just didn't we know it. We, yeah, we were told we were, we're liars. We were just like, I hope this isn't true. And then, and then, and what got, gets me, there was a clip they get, they were playing from him. I guess he was trying to do damage control uh, the night before, you know, was it Thursday night or something or yeah. Wednesday night, Wednesday night after the, after the reviews came out, the, stuff like that. And he was going, and there was somebody on the internet, and they were like, you know, to be a fan. You know, to be a fan because it's 1981. And I'm like, dude. Well, first of all, my son was like, is he having a stroke? Because he looked like a total. Anyway, dude, you're working on a show, okay, that you're supposed to know all this stuff about. And you're, you're supposed to tell, well, if you're a real fan, you'd know Tila was in every episode and all this other stuff. You're supposed to have watched it. You're supposed to have done all this research on it. You would know it wasn't 1981. Yes, the, the comics and like the toys and stuff came out earlier. But you'd know that it wasn't 1981 that it came out. Um, and then you're having a meltdown because you don't people like don't be like people calling you a liar. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's because my 51-year-old brain. You don't like that, right? Kind of sucks, right? Well, we made a well, it was Neon made a tweet in passing, and it wasn't even a video. It was just, I hope this isn't true. And you came down and shit upon us. The media and everybody else, you know, were calling us names and shit upon us. All these people were calling us liars on YouTube and different places. We're like, whatever, whatever. And we kept saying the whole time, well, I still hope it's good. I hope he's right, we're wrong, and it's good. We still kept giving you the benefit of the doubt, even though you were an asshole. And then you would bring it up back up. You just even like this last month, several times before it even came out, you brought up the tweets again, just for attention for yourself to once again, for no reason at all, bring it up to shit on it again. And now we see you lied. You lied, you lied, you lied. It sucks people call you a liar, but you actually were one. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Those spoilers, yeah, they were they were uh, uh, pretty accurate. Our insider information was pretty accurate. Um, again, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We're at uh, 209,000 yeah. subs. Thank you for the support. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to try to be objective. I'm going to try to say a couple of nice things about yeah, it. Yeah, we want to be fair. Yeah, before I, I rip this thing to shreds. But yeah, there's going to be a lot more <laughs> ripping than there's going to be complimenting. I just want to point out the audience score. Keep an eye on the audience score. This is going to change. This is going to drop. Yeah, don't blame the, um, well, I don't know, unless they, they artificially inflate it. Because no. Rotten Tomatoes is super easy to cheat. Uh, the, the critic score, it's the same place as you normally expect. They're the ones that kiss ass. They're the ones that like The Last Jedi. And if you like The Last Jedi and you weren't a fan of something and you came into it like people like The Last Jedi, you're probably going to love this. Cause it's the last Jedi 2.0. Yeah, I, I want to tell you that. That 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 is. That's the best comparison. And it's gonna be as divisive as Last Jedi. And I'm gonna be honest, Mattel, if you're listening, and I know sometimes you do listen, I think your toy sales are gonna reflect this mm -hmm. division. I really what do. What the hell? Why did you, what? What were you thinking? I yeah. don't I don't think they were. I think they were just like, we we get a show on Netflix, hot damn. Yeah, I you know? I, I I don't know. I mean We'll talk about it as we go through it. I mean, now we haven't seen the second half yet, and we'll tell you our thoughts on that in a little bit. We're being fair. But what did you want to say that was good? It, it looked nice. Yeah, it is a well-animated show. Um, it is, it, Of course, it was going to be. We have said since day one, with Powerhouse Animation doing the animation, it was going to be a good-looking mm -hmm. show, regardless of the content. I could say the same thing about The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi was a beautiful film. There mm -hmm. were scenes that were good. The composition was good. Ryan Johnson does have a good eye for cinematography and composition. They have good eyes for superficial things, but shitty eyes for storytelling. That being said, yeah, when you peel back the layers, it's like, oh, God. Now, another prop I will... Uh, that's not really a prop. If this had... 
if this had been the third season of a reboot mm -hmm. where we clearly had a baseline of the He-Man versus Skeletor saga instead of just a, a quick recap. I it think wasn't it, even a recap. It wasn't even a recap. It was just, oh, by the way, there's Masters of the Universe and here's some really cool toy art and go. You know? Yeah, they do this intro thing where they do give toy art. And it look, the intro looks really awesome. I'll give them that. The intro is cool. Yeah. And then, you know, okay. So, again, these are my thoughts going into it. If this had been the third, if this had been a reboot, if this had been the third season. It's not a sequel. It's definitely not a sequel. That, I got to get right out. It's, <laughs> right out of that freaking gate. Let's rip the band-aid it's off. It's a fanfic of what they thought would happen after the original show and the comic and the other, because they, they throw everything into it. By people that clearly didn't pay a lot of attention to any yeah. of that material. There There is a lot of fan service, but I have to wonder if this wasn't Mattel but throwing of, stuff in a there. A lot of the fan service, not all of it, but a lot of it's very superficial things. Yeah. Like, oh, look, those there, there's these ships look like the toys and stuff like that. Things you'd expect. Um, but there's not like anything that's really, really deep, I don't think. Is there? Not really. I mean, Preternia, they get Preternia in there uh, in a very different way than it would have been in the toy line. Now, Preternia was, they were going to do a Powers of Grayskull line. After, <laughs> the, yeah, after, well, okay. That's, we're going to talk about oh, that. God, that, right out of the gate, right out of the gate. So they were going to do a line afterwards, and they were going to have Hero, who was a, a, a predecessor to He-Man and Eldor. And they did eventually make figures, Super 7 made figures of these unproduced prototypes. And they do spend almost an entire episode in Preternia, which was kind of cool, because it's like, well, we never got to see this. So it's a kind of a neat what if. Mm -hmm. And we get some other characters. So that's, that, a, that's a plus. We yeah. give you a compliment there. We get some other characters that never really got a lot of screen time or never had any screen time in the cartoon. Uh, you know, we get Scareglow gets a, a good amount of screen time. But they kind of changed that too. Well, well there's, al there's always been a debate in the fandom if Scareglow was actually the ghost of Skeletor, because that's what his, his bio was, or if he was a separate character, a ghost who worked for Skeletor. And in this one, they basically make it out. Yeah, he was Skeletor, like the Red Skull is. But that doesn't even Vormir. make sense yeah. when you see the last episode. It, it, no. It, it, it's, yeah, there, again, there's some nice fan service in there. But I always like Scareglow, by the way. Scareglow is pretty cool. And that, the toy that's coming out does look badass. I will give them that. The toys look good. The toys look really good. I'll give them that. Mattel's toys look good. They do look good. There's a reason they led with the He-Man, Skeletor, Skelegod, you know, Mossman, like, what the f Oh, wait, we're going to talk about that here. Just, just yeah. Just buckle up. Oh, God. Okay. Grab so, your asses. Here it comes. So right out of the gate. It is very clear this is about deconstructing Masters of the Universe lore, deconstructing He-Man, relegating He-Man and the lore to the back burner, and actually making it problematic. Right out of the effing gate, we learn Castle Grayskull is a lie. It doesn't even really exist. Right. It's like a hologram protecting the, uh, whatever they call it, the... Council of Elder Castle, Crystal Castle, much yeah. prettier looking we building. We just needed He-Man grabbing his ears and going, Showtime Sorceress. Pretty much. It was all a lie. So that like is the whole the whole theme of this show. And you, can, you can't walk this back. Even if they bring, and we'll talk about He-Man. Even if they bring He-Man back, you can't walk it back because you've proven everything is a lie. It's so cynical. This is such a cynical take on He-Man. It's, it's what someone who hates the show would do. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's like what happened with Last Jedi and they, oh, and with Star Wars. Somebody who loved Luke Skywalker, loved the characters, and loved the classic show wouldn't have made that film. Exactly. Same thing here. It's yep. the exact same thing. And you know that battle thing that everybody's going nuts for in the trailer and we said that's probably just the first episode? <laughs> It wasn't even the whole first episode. It was a few minutes of the first episode. You, you saw almost that entire battle in the trailer. Mm -hmm. And and the, the biggest kick in the balls is we don't even see more than, what, a minute or two of actual He-Man. Yeah. Because the He-Man in the very beginning of the first episode is actually Faker. Mm -hmm. It's not actually He-Man. Um, so we get Faker. We get evil He-Man, too. And we get evil He-Man. But we don't actually see... The real deal, actual He-Man for more than maybe two minutes mm -hmm. tops. Um, then he becomes a smear. Oh, God. I'll talk about that. So, okay, there have been a lot of plot lines over the... And again, I, I won't be very clear. They sold this as being a sequel to the original show. That was how... Right? If they had never yeah. done that... Well, I noticed Mark Hamill tried to say it wasn't really a sequel. I know he tried to, to clarify that. 
But all the outlets, media outlets, and the what's the Kevin Smith and stuff, they're like, oh, it's a sequel. It's a continuation. <laughs> it is not. It is not. It is. It's a fanfic of what one person's version of, you know. Yeah, it is cobbled together. There are pieces Milk from feminist version. <laughs> There are pieces from the comics. There are pe pieces from the toy lore. There are pieces from other media, the, the storybooks and stuff like that. There, there are pieces from Filmation, but there are so many. If you go into this expecting a direct sequel to the Filmation show, you're going to find so many things that completely contradict mm -hmm. the Filmation series. This is not a sequel to, to Filmation. This is a sequel, not even a sequel, a... I don't know what the fuck. Fanfic of all the That's different what I said. masters of the universe. Here's the thing: if they were just gonna stuff. do this, then they should have just greenlit a couple seasons and, and yes. reboot it. Yes. And made it its own thing. Yes. If it had been its own thing, it's still shit. What they what they're doing here with with, with it's the Tila show. Um, they or they could have just done a show about Tila, but actually made it like actual Tila. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, Sarah Michelle Gellar, and I hope you hear this. Your acting sucked. I mean, what do I expect? Your acting always sucks, but your voice acting really sucks. Like, that does not sound like Tila at all. It's more like a wine mom, like, oh my God, like, hey man, maybe mad. Like, uh, it's, it's not as, like, I mean, there's some good voice acting. That's not one of them. She's not Tila. I mean, she, this, you, no, she is not this, Tila. This character is not Tila. I mean, for all they talk about, you know, Tila was trying to, this character is a whiner. Yeah. She's entitled. Unlikable. She's a bitch. She's an unlikable bitch. I mean, Tila was always kind of badass, but she was still likable and important. You're like, yeah, she was in every episode. Yeah, the real Tila was, and the real Tila was likable, and the real Tila, you, you wanted to root for her, and she was fun. This one's a whiny bitch. You didn't tell me. Literally, she finds out he's Adam as he dies. Okay, and then she's so ass mad about it that she decides she's gonna be the captain of the guard and she's gonna walk away from everyone because they all lied to her because they didn't tell her. Dude sacrificed himself to save her ass and everybody else, and then she acts like a whiny little entitled bitch. Yeah, it's not it's not Tila. So I mean, this is I you know I'd say hey, this is Tila's big day. This is not Tila. Um, this is not any incarnation of Tila. Even look at the 2002 series. Looking at the comics. Looking at the haircut. Looking at the haircut. I am glad they changed her design because this character is not Tila. You know how Faker, this is like, you know, whatever you call Tila, fake Tila. Taker. Yeah, Taker. There you go. Taker. This is Taker. This isn't even Tila. And she is such a, a chip on her shoulder. She's such a little bitch. You just want to slap her. She's not even likable. No, she's it's not. It's like, what the hell? You know, yeah. at least real Tila. Yeah, at least Tila didn't take shit. And Tila fought back. And Tila was always an important character. But Tila, you know. She was wasn't a, selfish. No. She was never selfish. She was selfish. not a, a, a complete ass cow like this This Tila is. She wasn't and a drama queen. And the, the voice acting was better. Especially in the 2002 show. Uh, Geller sucks. I'm, I'm, there are some characters the voice acting is really good. Like I think Eva Lynn was pretty good. She was. She wasn't bad. Sorceress yeah. wasn't too bad. There Man was Arms some, was very good. Man Arms was very good. There's a lot of characters that do very well with the voice Actually, acting. Actually, He Man was bad. What the hell is up with Merman? He needs his glug glug voice. He's not doing. He's just like oh, do Merman. He's not even doing the you know Hey Man. Glug, glug, glug. Uh, he always did. All I hear with and, and, like, and it's right after the old show. And Merman suddenly had talking voice lessons? Yeah, yeah, it's like Donald Duck when Donald Duck becomes Don Cheadle. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's like, well, what the hell happened here? I mean, it was funny because that was supposed to be a comedy, but this is like, why is Merman completely understandable now? Um, yeah, okay, so let's let's wind it back. First episode, which you did, did see. I saw the first couple episodes, yes. Lots of storylines over the years, various incarnations of the show. The, the one consistent is the sorceress isn't stupid. Mm -mm. The sorceress isn't dumb. This sorceress in this incarnation of Masters of the Universe is really freaking stupid. Literally, Skeletor and Evil Lynn put a little mustache they on. They put them. Halloween costumes on. They put Halloween costumes on, like we're talking Batman Forever style, and they walk in the front door of Castle Grayskull. Because they're, they look like the real people, but you know, she doesn't send something's off here. Squid King was like, I'm not Skeletor, I'm Skeledave. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you know, like like put a little mustache on and that's it. They walk in the fucking front door of Castle Grayskull and she's so dumb, she doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. A sorceress was always five steps ahead of everybody else. She just couldn't really do anything. Yeah, the most she was powerful character in, in He-Man, Masters in the Masters of the Universe, was the sorceress. Sorceress. I mean, she knew she knew what the hell was up, and that, right? And, and, and you know what? Here's a little secret you might not have known. <laughs> it's a woman. No, right. You know, uh, unlike what they want to tell you now, where women were kept down and, and they were always side characters. The most powerful character was a woman. Oh, 
Stop making sense. Um, and you know who, who ran this shit show? Three men. <laughs> so yeah, so Skeletor, Evil Limb walk in the front door. Um, and then it turns out that Castle Grayskull is a lie. Mm -hmm. It's a freaking hologram. And that, that all of Eternia's magic is in a ball in the basement. And now um, now everybody's into tech. It's, it, that turns into She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Yeah. And then, okay, so so this happens. We have... Um, they, they, they did not learn their lesson. No, they didn't. Um, Adam Adam gets killed. He-Man gets killed. Yeah, that's a smear. He he sacrifices... Gets poofed. I said he, they smear, he's a smear. He sacrifices himself. And then she, Cringer loses power. Battlecat loses power, becomes Cringer, and she sees that. Then she realizes that he's Adam. He turns to Adam. And then he, did, and he did, he's gone, and there's literally a big a soot smear. smear on the ground. And that's Adam. And they keep looking at the soot smear. Like, the, he's a smear. <laughs> so he's smeared on the ground. And then she, and instead of being like, oh my God, I lost my best friend. No, she's mad because he didn't tell her he was He-Man. Your best friend's dead. Oh, I forgot. That, that apparently they like this incineration gag and I'm sorry. We did it again? Orko creates a giant magnifying glass and accidentally cooks a nest full of birds. Why would you do such a thing? And they poof <gasps> into ash. Well, I'm, okay, you know what? I'm, I, I'm more mad at Kevin Smith about that, actually. We'll, I we'll talk about person. Orko, because that, that leak was 100% accurate, and it was so manipulative and cruel how how it was done. I, I love how you, we'll talk about it in a bit, but I love how you said to me how what it was like watching, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, okay. so, okay, yeah. Adam's gone, the magic's gone. Uh, Tila, they, they go tell King Randor. Now, Marlena, we know from the original series, had some some inkling well, that... Well, here she flat out knows. She flat out knows. You know, she's like, oh my God, you know, and, and Randor is like so stupid. One, Randor is an likable asshole. He's like, see, that that's pride, father. Then he goes, that's pride, fatherly pride. They got the pride in there because, you know, she's a lesbian now. And and then he's like, you know, I wish I could have some of that fatherly pride. Oh, he's a complete asshat. Oh, he is. I mean, basically most of the men in the show, the most of the heroes and even you know, the good guys, they turn in to, you know, pussify, they pussified them, killed them, or they're assholes. Yeah, pretty much. I, I mean, mean, I'm just going to tell you straight up. The, the, the show, like Grace Randolph said, I will agree with her on this. Sheer was kind of the show. For, everybody watched both. I mean, let's be honest. I Everybody watched both shows. But they kind of made Sheer to be more for, the, you know, female-focused, girl-focused. And he Man is clearly more male-focused and for the boys, even though everybody watched them both. And you had both, so you could be like, oh, I can watch everybody. Um... Now the girls got the girls. Twitter, Tumblr got Shira back and got for the girls and the and the male feminists. And now we have He Man, but it's not He Man. It's Masters of the Universe because it's Tila show, and they they ruin all the male characters. The show that was for guys, and they're gonna come into it wanting to see what they knew. Poof. Yeah, we we knew. It's estrogen. It's a Netflix show, current year, the '80s uh, aesthetic. The IP was a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Just like the Trojan horse in the first episode, and you see it coming a mile away, that's exactly what happened here. It, it was a Trojan horse to tell the story about these these powerful women who lost the men in their lives, but they're gonna they're gonna make do. They're gonna become their true selves now because oh, they're not held we down. We forgot to mention Moss Man. Yeah, Moss Man shows up. Well, he shows up at the end again too, but he's dead. Moss Man shows up for like like thirty seconds and gets fried. In the first yeah, episode. and they have uh, the guy who used to do the voice of a Skel Alan, Skel Alan yeah. yeah, yeah. They have yeah. him doing Moss Man now. The toys that came out with the launch is He Man, uh, Skeletor, uh, Moss Man, and what was the other one? There was one more. Skelegod and no, Evil Lynn. Evil Lynn. Moss Man. They had Moss Man come out. Yeah, they kill Moss Man. He gets fried before they they turn him into a, into like a, a pile of cinders before they, they do that to Adam. They kill Moss Man right from the beginning. Yeah, because we can't we can't have Moss Man. Well, he's in it again, but he's dead. Was that because they, people were mad because they didn't want to buy him because he smelled like you know pine pine fresh air freshener, so they just killed him off? I don't know. You can hang him in your car. The new ones don't smell like pine, and that's a missed opportunity. Stink or ant for all of ten seconds. Oh, and they kick his ass too because, well, they would. He's Stinkor. Now, so you didn't like some of the jokes. Some of the jokes I felt did, some of them, I felt did feel very He-Man to me. Um, but there were some that didn't. And they make some pervy jokes in there too. Yeah, I was, the, look, the whole thing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you as, as you know, somebody who grew up watching the show and who loved that show and the 2002 show. And this did not feel like any incarnation of Masters of the Universe. And people are going to be like, oh, this is just because we're moving in a new Which direction. Which could have been okay if it was this new if thing and they re well, it still would have gone over like a lead fart. Yeah. But 
they they had rebooted it and, made, and and gave a backstory and led up to this and then set it up for this, not said it was right after the original show because it's it's not. It's not. It's and completely the, different. The characters are not themselves. King Randor is an unlikable asshole. He banishes Duncan for lying to him. Just so flippantly. I'm like, these right. guys were like bros, man. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he banishes that... everybody. Yeah. You know, and then he doesn't make any sense. And like Tila, you know, is a bitch and she's got bigger balls Rage than Kevin quits. Smith. Yeah. You know, so it, and, and then and yeah. then, then it turns into like Mad Max meets the Borg for no reason. We've got th this whole plot line, the whole second episode is this whole plot line about Triclops taking over with a, a techno cult that doesn't It's like a televangelist type. Yeah. It doesn't feel anything like anything masters of the universe at all mm -hmm. i mean nothing like this is so far removed and again you know it's henry rollins does the the, the voice of triclops and that's all i can hear is henry rollins and again going back to the original series triclops and and uh you know trap were pretty dumb characters mm -hmm. now they made them much smarter in the 2002 oh, well, show. Well, yeah, well, Trapjaw, they 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 off oh, right off. Oh, he comes back though. Oh, he they wasn't dead. They rebuilt. Yeah, they rebuilt because he's a bad guy. They can oh, keep oh him. yeah, okay. Yeah, they can so keep they him. made sure that he got he got a saw blade to the head. But there's like body horror and shit going on, and again, it doesn't like right out of the gate, it, it becomes this like attorney becomes this freaking dystopian wasteland. And it's all about tech. It was very Shira. Yeah, it was very sheer. Even the some of the designs kind of yeah. looked like... Yeah, know. it was very... I'm like, because that went over so, so well for you. And I understand, you know, He-Man, you know, that, that whole look has always been a cross between, you know, fantasy, barbarian, and, and tech. But they go all in on tech without magic being there. Again, fine, I guess that would be kind of a plot point, but... It didn't feel anything like Masters of the Universe. Oh, and you have to know that Tila's turned her back on magic completely. And men. Uh, and, yeah, and men. Um, and, you know, it hates everyone. And, and, she, this, her, and she goes, this is, my, I, I want to live a life of truth. I'm like, well, this show is like a life of shit. But, yes, it's very, 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 very heavily implied that her and, was it, Andra, Andra yeah. have a thing going on. Very heavily And Andra's implied. the smartest. She's the engineer. She's the brains. She's the whatever, of course. Um, cause we, you know, we had another redhead character, so we had to make her black, obviously. I'm surprised it left Tila be white, another, to be an fair. Another girl loves the science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love the science. Hey, I like girls that like science. I yeah. like science. But I just think they always have to push it, just so you know, she's smarter than everyone. And it's very heavily implied that they're a couple. And then at that point, it just kind of drags on. It becomes like one episode dragged out over like three episodes they go find the uh, halves of the power sword which again that came from the toy line originally mm -hmm. it was skeletor and he-man both had half you put together that's how you open Castle grey skull again that's kind of a yeah that's actually from kind of a neat callback but also like again don't call this the filmation yeah, show for because every it's not. neat thing they have that calls back that's like a little fan reference there's like there's like 10 other things that are shit and yeah. it's like and then and they, they spend the whole time killing all the characters what they have, they have left, they shit on the characters. Sometimes they kill the characters and shit on the characters. So let's talk about Orko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Orko, yeah, he dies. Kevin Smith said, what, before that, Kevin Smith said he does not, he did not like Orko. And 75% of the people we talked to in our thing did not like Orko. The focus group. Yeah, and people on the internet like lost their shit because like, how could you not like Orko? Um, and you highly met, misrepresented to, to Mattel who didn't like, how many people did not like Orko. And then he's been, if you saw the video, everybody's talked about it. He was talking about what happens to Orko, which you're, I'll let you talk about in a minute. And he giddily laughs and he's like, oh, so we're going to, everybody hated him. So we're going to make everybody love him. And then we're going to kill him, you know? And that's exactly, well, I wouldn't think everybody loved him. They still made him kind of a punk ass, whatever. But continue. Yeah, so Orko doesn't just die heroically. We know Orko's sick because magic has disappeared mm -hmm. from Eternia. So he's... You know, making references. He's already to being, weak and sick. He's already weak and sick, and right from the beginning, his personality is: I know I'm gonna die, and I didn't do I didn't do right by people, and da 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 da. And I'm like, it's like watching a sick kid with cancer get hit by a bus because you know it's already bad. You know the poor kid is already going through a lot and is gonna die, but you just made it so much worse. Yeah, like it was pathetic. It wasn't like Orko's likable all of a sudden it was like orko is just sad he's just a sad pathetic character 
And his whole reason for being in this show is to kill him off because look how edgy I am. I killed Orko. Yeah, he basically said, he said, I'm going to make him really likable so you feel bad for him and then I'm going to kill him. <laughs> and they spend a lot of time, you know, they make his grave and they, they put some, you know, in Preternia and they put a little O on it. And Evelyn even puts her helmet by his grave and, and uh, they make the grave look like um, Adam asks for, uh, well, we'll talk about how they get the Preternia. Adam asks for uh, a little bit of trial to come. So he's got his flowers and it looks like, it's like they spend more time lamenting Orko than we actually got to see, you know, Orko's. Mm -hmm. And it was it was it was manipulative. Now, well, you could that's not Kevin Smith just that uh, word. This whole thing was this this whole thing this whole show was manipulative. It's who the hell is it for? So anyway, so yeah, they go they gotta go get the the two halves of power sword back. They go to heaven and hell basically to get back. They do get Scareglow in there because in the Nether world, it's the ghost of Skeletor. And then Tila has to confront He Man, evil He Man, right? And she confronts evil He Man who basically tells her that uh, she doesn't have the power because she gave it to him. She, she gave up her often. agency. She gave up her agency. And Evil Lynn, okay, so this, this is a theme throughout the entire show. A show done by men, by the way. Done by men. Is that Tila and Evil Lynn were basically held back by the men in their lives. Mm -hmm. Evil Lynn spends some time talking to Tila about how she could have been the big bad. She could have been the master of the universe but she gave her life to Skeletor's cause and she made him a success. This is almost like, this is like some like corporate wife complaining that she mm -hmm. could have been the boss lady, but she had to give up her agency. She said she was a trophy wife. She was a trophy wife. That's exactly what's going on here. Now, Evil Lynn, even in the 2002 series, if she wanted to, probably could have kicked Skeletor's ass. Yeah, anytime. And she tried to double cross him a couple times. That's not the case here. She's like in an abusive relationship. Um, Tila, though, yeah, she was basically held back by all the lies of her, her ex. And that's what they're doing. They're bitching about their exes. They're bitching about, you know, their dead husbands or their, oh, my husband was gay and I didn't know. So now I'm going to, I felt lied to the I, whole time. It, it, the whole thing's stupid. It's, it's just stupid. fucking dumb. And it's basically, the whole thing is just to ruin the characters that were existed. Yes. Okay, remember. He Man and the Masters of the Universe, a show that anybody will tell you, even back when the She Ra was going on, they're like, well, it's not for you men. You have He Man. This is for the ladies. It's not for you. So they, okay, fine. They got a He Man show. They take He Man out of it. They make it the Tila show. They, 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 they pussify characters, kill the characters, make them horrible people that are just keeping the women back. So it's basically the, the male version of feminism show. Yeah. Um, that most women, and you know, and, and the kicker is a lot of women watched He Man. A lot of girls watched it too. A lot of girls like these characters too. I'm yeah. just like, you know, I didn't want you killing them off from the, in the name of feminism. Uh, she does get the sword, by the way. Anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, we never said that, actually. Uh, we never said that. That was, that was a Freudian Smith, slip. Smith inserted that one. So, yeah, this show is all about deconstructing masters of the universe. I mean, we heard. It was going to be current year and on Netflix. We're like, oh, that's going to be problematic. It's a big, buff, blonde hair, blue eyed guy. How do we do a show about him current year? Well, we sideline him and we take him out. But it's not even about like the guys being stupid or whatever. This is like every male lead gets sidelined in some fashion. Like they literally had, uh, you know, a, 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 a list of characters like, okay, well, we can have man at arms at least, right? Mm -hmm. No, for reasons he has to stay here and protect the sorceress. Well, so, no, she's a new man in arms anyway. Or yeah, was a new man in arms anyway. Yeah, so Duncan, Duncan has to stay behind and protect the sorceress. Oh, he's going to send Roboto to do his job because again, this this actually does conflict with the filmation show quite a bit. The origin of Roboto and this one, Roboto is a robot he built and put his mind into. So Roboto knows how to reforge the sword. Um, that came from the con. It's it, it's a it's a mishmash. Well, we can't have Roboto because he's almost like a man. So we got to kill Roboto mm -hmm. and we kill Orko. Mm -hmm. And we're basically just left with... We killed Moss Man. We killed Moss Man. You know, now we get, we get to go to the afterlife with all the dead, the dead He-Men. You know, we do get Scareglow because, yeah, people like Scareglow, right? He's, he's worth a lot. That figure's worth a lot. Um, so we get to go to the afterlife, which is next episode, actually. Uh, but anyway, it's... I, it's exactly what we thought it was going to be. It's actually worse. I think I think it's actually worse than I thought it was going to be. Because it's so deliberate that they are telling this story to tear down all the men and masters of the universe, which is a predominantly male 
power fantasy. Because that's what it was. 95% male and, characters. And then who is this for? Because if you want the old school fans who watch the show, and that includes women too, this is not this is not it. And if you want to watch, if you have new people that don't watch the show, they're going to come into it not knowing what the hell's going on, and it, it's not it. Yeah, I think you can sum it up with this is not it. That That's just it. There, look, if this had been a reboot, which of course they wouldn't, they wouldn't go there on Netflix current year, and you had two seasons to build up the He-Man versus Skeletor conflict, and then you would launch into this like, okay, now what happened if He-Man got sidelined for a season? What would the other characters do? Then it would mean something. But a lot of, like, Roboto, he was in one or two episodes of the Filmation show. He didn't mean anything to anybody, really. He was just kind of there. But he was there, so Man-at-Arms wasn't there. Because if Man-at-Arms was there, Man-at-Arms would have handled shit. Yeah, well, yeah, because we can't have that. Even so, Evil Lynn said he was actually the most powerful man in Eternia. He's like, he, he was the bat, the, he's like, she's like, I kept telling Skeletor we need to take out Man-at-Arms, not He-Man. Focus on Man-at-Arms. Mm -hmm. yeah, the whole thing's just, I mean, the more I think about it, the angrier I get. And then, you know, we have the whole thing with, yeah, so He-Man's, well, Adam's dead. And so when they go to, like, pre Ternia to get him, um... You know, it is true. He, if he, he's been, he's told flat out that if he leaves, that's it. You know, and you die, you know, you, you can't come back. Okay. Yeah. So now at the end of the ep at the end of the of the season, Netflix five episodes is not a damn season. Stop that shit. Yeah. At the end of of this episode, um, you have Adam getting stabbed. You know, he he's stabbed and, and and he falls over. Now he's not. Dead, I don't think. I don't think. He I is, moving yeah. forward. I I I think they're gonna. I think that they'll be like, just wait, just wait, because they'll probably try to put He Man back, but you're not gonna get him to the very end. Yes. Because it's problematic. Netflix, one of those companies that have their list of all the check boxes you have to hit. Well, the show's already done by free men, so that takes a whole bunch of the positions already. So you got to make sure you make it about women and diverse women and all this other shit. Because if you don't, Netflix isn't gonna air it. Then don't do He Man. If you can't do it right, don't do it at all. Problem solved. If Mattel did this to sell toys, I'm telling you, Mattel, you're not going to sell toys. This is going to be. Not in the ways you want to. I talked about help and anti help. This is anti help. This is like people were so excited to hear that we had a He Man series coming that was going to be done by Powerhouse, the people that, that, that did Castlevania. We were excited. We were like, oh my God, yes. Yeah, I love Castlevania. I was they like, learned oh my a God, lesson this... from She Ra. We're yeah. going to get something good. No. And in some, in some ways, I actually feel like this is a little bit worse than She Ra because at least She Ra, we knew going into it what it was going to be. It was a complete reboot, complete reboot from a certain point right. of view. And that's it. You can say, okay, I can separate this Oh, I knew as soon as it was Noel Stevenson we were going to get. But they never, you know, for all the, you know, they never destroyed Adora. They never destroyed, <laughs> well. I mean, kill her? They, uh, kill her. Okay, kill her. She was they still a main character. They destroyed Adora. They, they destroyed, okay. kill her. They destroyed, uh, they destroyed Adora. They didn't sideline She-Ra for the entire show. She was still in the show. I'm just like, they keep going on. It was, for, it was a show for fans by fans. They weren't fans. Clearly, no one makes this many changes. You know, the, only, the only reason, and the, the, they changed all this shit so Netflix would do it. That's exactly this the whole thing I'm is just, it's pandered to a certain audience that Netflix wants. They changed everything so that Netflix would air it. Then go someplace else and go and do a show and put it someplace else. Yeah, right. That's what I think people are gonna have to do to actually tell the the stories they want to tell. They're gonna have to go. And Adam else. looks like a flipping chick. Yeah, this, I mean, right now. Tia looks like a dude and Adam looks like a woman. Yeah. Yeah, even, like, people were complaining on, on Twitter. They're like, what, you want Adam to look just like He-Man, just like palette swapped? I'm like, no. no. 2002, they did it. They made him look like a teenager, but he didn't look like a femboy. He was. He looks like a girl. Yeah. I'm and, sorry. Oh, forgot to mention the transformation sequence. Oh, my God. The fucking. Oh, my God. It's Sailor a, fucking moon. It's Sailor moon. Transformation sequence. It's Sailor Moon. He Even his butt cheeks are there when the light yes! cross comes across. He's all glittery and prismatic as he spins around, and then the loincloth. Oh, he goes out to his arm. He gets the, yes. the, the, the arm guards, and then it goes to the loincloth, and the loincloth appears as he's spinning, like, like flipping Sailor Moon, and you can see the, at the bottom of his ass cheeks. Pretty sure. Yes! We see him transform into He-Man one time, and it's a fucking Sailor Moon transformation sequence. 
Mm -hmm. It really is. I, I I was like, I think I mentally blocked that out until now. I'm like, oh, Fembo. Oh my God, Sailor that. Moon. I'm like, that. shit, I was so upset by everything else that happened in this show. So yeah, I mean, to, to your point, I don't know. And I have to I have to give props to Alan Oppenheimer. Uh, he was actually the best voice actor in the show. Let's give it, let's give a pro let's give it up for Alan. Mossman was not in this show very much, but he was very good when he was in it. And, uh, oh, yeah, Mark it, Hamill wasted. sounds like Joker. He sounds exactly like And the like way Joker. he was talking, oh, yeah, at the end. So, so it turns out Skeletor is in Evil Lynn's uh, staff the whole time, and he she didn't know it because it was protecting, Man, his, he's protecting his essence. And he couldn't tell her, and then she needs to, and he tells her to come over with him. And it was, it was very, like, you know, it was very Joker, Harley Quinn esque. He even calls her Lenny, like, get over here, Lenny. He does. I'm like, yes. oh, for God's sake. And, and then she's she said, just like Harley Quinn. Well, she goes, well, sorry, I started to like you and goes everything. But I think she's still, I think that she's going to still be on the good side. We just don't know yet. And I think they're going to, I think they're going to bring He-Man back. I really do in the second season. But it's going to be in the end or they're going to be like, and then they're going to understand that he, well, he's already dead. So he's going to move on and they're going to retire it. And he's going to take the, you know, the sword of power is going to turn into something else or something. But, you know, they're going to bring He-Man back in the second half. I mean, I'll give them that. I'm pretty sure they're going to. Yeah. I mean, there is an opportunity to, to walk a lot of this stuff back like even the way orko died he just sort of like disappeared i mean they could very easily bring orko back <laughs> it's okay it's all a dream it's in a it's snow a globe it's an evil in staff She's yeah it's, it's it, you know and there's a, the little uh you uh, little attorney and autistic kid is looking in the staff and that's what the whole orko? thing was <laughs> that's even worse that is worse. So now he's got <laughs> cancer too. And but I'm just dying. like, I'm, it, it, you know, a lot of people know what I'm this talking about. This is just, this is just, it's, look. The art I, looks good though. That's what makes me mad. It is a well-polished oh, turd. And how many furries are in a turn, you know? Yeah, I know, right? Like every freaking other character in this show is a freaking furry. Like, yeah, they had animal people in on Eternia. Yes, they did, but not that many. Almost, it's almost like now the the, the humans are the masters of the, of the furries, and it's like, isn't that kind of wrong? It does. It kind of feels like were that. They, were they using the magic to keep the population in control? Right, because because I mean, the magic, you know, I don't like know. Like giant I mean, rat traps worked. or something. They had Beast Man and all that, Moss Man, obviously. Right, but, but I'm not just like, like not the yeah, sheer number of furries. It's, there's a lot of furries. So what did we learn? Castle Grayskull is not real. It's an illusion. It was to hide the Hall of Wisdom or whatever the hell that was. Um, you know, the, we have Tila's a, a, a dude who turned into a pouty bitch. They're, for all her strength, she's a pouty bitch. Yeah, at, she's at the end of the day, she's a pouty bitch. Oh, and Sarah Michelle Geller can't act worth shit, and the voice acting is garbage on, yeah. on Tila. It doesn't. And, and you can be mean to me all you want. If you hear her open her mouth, that does not sound like Tila at all. No, it's, um, it, Triclops is a, is is a is a, a far right Christian, uh, and he's his a cult, fundamentalist, and his fundamentalist yeah. in his cult. Um, anybody that was a, a popular male, powerful male character in the original show is either dead or sidelined. Yeah. Um, Tila somehow has all the power of both, he, you know, he, she has all the, she's all the strength of He-Man and all the, ma you know, and Sorcerer at the same time, did you say? Yeah, pretty much. She's, she's like, yeah, she's going to wind up, she's going to wind up getting everything. I think by the end of the show, Tila's going to get everything. Mm -hmm. She's going to be Sorceress. And, and the girl. And the girl, she's gonna get the girl, and yeah, because they're they're not gonna they're not gonna go back to the status quo. If they do, it'll be in the last couple minutes of the last episode. But how can they at this point? You know, you've already like, I mean, what are they gonna do? Go back to like the the harebrained plot of the week with Skeletor? But they've already I don't know. Yeah, somehow Skeletor is suddenly super competent. Yeah, I mean, suddenly he's like really really competent. But the sorceress isn't. The yeah. Like I said, the sorceress never would have fallen for that shit in any yeah. incarnation, and, incarnation and Mer of the and show. And suddenly Merman could speak totally clearly yeah. and, yeah. you know, he has he had voice lessons in, in between. Like, he learned how to, to articulate himself very well somehow. Uh, it, it, it's, the whole thing is just a mess. I don't know who it's for. I don't know who it's for. That That's my thing. Is like, I don't, I mean, it's not for new audiences because there's too much backstory. Sure, that wasn't for the old one. It's not for the old audiences. It, 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 it's not here to, oh, to sell head. toys because Mattel, you're not going to sell toys. You sold a lot of He-Man Skeletor who are barely in the show. You sold He-Man Skeletor figures. And Moss Man. Moss Man's out too and he's, he, they brought him out. In the he's room. barely in the show. I, 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 don't even have, I don't even know. I don't even know what the... And then there's no pictures of Tila. We have yet to see pictures of oh, Tila. Oh no, I saw it. Sarah Michelle Geller was holding a Tila and they actually, in the box, she she looks like she's throwing a punch. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm like, sake. move no over. No one else is. No. 
Move over, Carol Danvers. We have a new shelf warmer. And, and, and her name honestly, is Tila. And I'm not trying to just be a bitch and pick on Sarah Michelle Geller, but the voice acting for Tila is terrible. They even made a joke. Skeletor makes a joke about her being a cheerleader. Oh, she even sounds like it. She sounds like it. It doesn't even fit. That's she, the thing. She, she was never a good actress to begin with, but it's really bad here. Sarah Michelle Geller aside, the voice does not fit the character. It doesn't character. fit the character. You it know? really doesn't. She, she basically, like, she was somebody that thought it was a name or she was friends with somebody and she hasn't done anything in years and so they got her to do this because it, it, it does not fit. Like, a it lot doesn't of the, fit. There's a couple other voices that are, you know, but hers is the one that stands out the most and she's, like, the lead character. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have somebody carry the show, if you're going to have Tila carry the show, then you need to find a voice that fits the character and... That the one cheer, doesn't. The cheerleader voice does not fit the character sorry it, the whole thing is just i don't even it's just a mess it's it's look this was a, a quick like I, I again i i think you're right i think it was probably how this whole thing got started because we know it wouldn't have been kevin smith because kevin smith has said repeatedly he was not a big he-man yeah fan. he didn't watch the damn thing so he wasn't gonna go and another guy said it. keep it like shakespeare don't change it too much you changed everything and this isn't like shakespeare this is like this is this is um, shake and bake, He-Man. Yeah, shake and bake. It's it not is. Shakespeare, it's shake and bake. It, and, you know, I mean, look, some people are going to like it. Uh, and you're allowed to like you're it. You're allowed to like if it. If you like it, that's good. Because you know what? I'm happy somebody's happy because most people aren't going to probably be happy. Uh, critics are going to love it because oh, yeah. they're already writing articles about how, like, He-Man needed to move beyond He-Man. It's the same people who like Last Jedi. Yeah, same if people they were who the like one, Last they, Jedi. They're saying the exact same things, and they're already starting. Look, right here. Little Liz Review. I just I just want to like it to piss off the man babies. Right. And here's the thing, guys. They're already starting this. Kevin Smith said it in that Up Rocks article, you know, already. You know, they're trying to blame it that if you don't like it, it's because you don't like women. It's misogyny. It's because it's, you, you don't let your toxic person who is racist, misogynist, troll. Wah, 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 wah. Um, you yeah. know, because you're mad because it was made for men and now it's made for everyone. No, it's not made it's for not everyone. It's made for anyone. It's made, well, it's made, if it's ain't made for anyone, it's made for women femini and fem male feminists on Twitter because, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're taking all the male characters that were strong more models for boys and then taking them and just, you know, destroying them. Um, the, it's, it's not made for anyone and they're already starting the narrative. It's exactly what you expect because you'd think that they'd be a little creative by now, but no, no, they're already starting. If you don't like the show, it's not because it's a piece of shit. And I mean, it's, it's not terrible if it wasn't He-Man. Yeah, that, that's the vibe I Same get. Same with from... She-Ra. It wouldn't been terrible if it wasn't She-Ra. I would agree with that. I would think that, I, I feel like this is a story that Kevin Smith or somebody wanted to tell but they, they tro Trojan horsed it with a classic IP because they knew it wouldn't have gotten greenlit otherwise. It's like Cinderella. They cut the toe or the heel off to make it fit the shoe. Right. And in and this it, case, it, yeah. he mans the toe. Yeah, apparently. But I'm just, and Orko's the heel. Uh, but I'm just like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's not... It's not a sequel. It is not a continuation of the show. Oh, it's going to pick up our It's a continuation. No. It's badass. Oh, it's bad. And it's ass. It's just not badass. And it's like... So technically you didn't lie. Yeah, technically it is badass. Just, you know, there should have been like Semantics. a comma in between the bad and the ass. Um, but yeah, they're already starting the narrative. If you don't like it, you're a misogynistic, blah, 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 whatever. No, it's because it's not, it's not He-Man. And I would really, really wish these people would stop rebooting these, well, they're not even rebooting, they're trying to continue it. Stop doing these shows from the 80s and then doing it for current day. Because it doesn't work. You, to, to make it work, you have to ruin everything that made it great. And there's a reason why everything, pretty much all the stuff you get nowadays in comics and everything else is absolute shit. Because the creativity and the cool st stories and back in the day when you could tell stories and have characters that were good and it didn't belittle somebody else to elevate another one, those days are over. The only way you can have a good, strong female character is if you piss all over the male one. I'm sorry, I'm a woman. Yeah, it's it, it is a Netflix show. I think I think He Man could be done properly, but not on Netflix, not current year. And this is, these are all all of them are like, oh, it's great, oh, it's great, oh, it's great. Yeah, my ass. Yeah, it one, is not one door. Yeah, I think I think this was Mattel being like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we got all these characters that we never had on screen before on no, screen? No, we were actual fans. Then we're, yeah, and we did. We had a lot of characters that were never before seen in animation. This you one know, gave it a two out of four, and it's listed as fresh. A B. Okay, let's see, ending is fresh, even if it's, you know, not great. Oh, a nine. Bullshit. Bullshit. You know, I guarantee you these people weren't even around then. 
Yeah, it's uh, no. I I would give it. I'd give it a three out of ten. It's just more. For, it's it's Last Jedi. It's yeah, more. It's more, it's yeah. more the same. Yep. We have to tear. Oh, who was the hero? Luke Skywalker. We have to pussify and ruin him. And now we'll make the we'll make it a. It, it, this show would be great if it fit a woman. That's exactly what they did. Uh, I mean, literally, we don't even see a lot of the other masters. Like, there are so many masters of the universe. They showed Clamp Champ and Fisto in the beginning. We never see them again after the battle. I saw that. We never see them again. We never see... There, there are dozens of heroic warriors. Manny faces, where's Ram Man? Where All these other characters that would have, you know, unless they show up in the second half. But right now, it's just Tila and her friend that's a girl. Oh, if they were going to do this, they should not have divided it in half. No. I'm gonna tell you straight up. If it turns out that you you fit you fix it in a way and make it you know you're not gonna fix it because you already ruined so many things. But if it turns out that you bring He-Man back and you make it about He-Man again and return it to what it should have been, um, if that's what happens, you never should have split it because you're gonna get so much shit. If you had just ran it through, you'd be better off. Yeah, if we finally get like all these other masters coming back for one big battle with Skelegod, which is probably where it's gonna go. With Tila being the leader, of course. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, of course. Of course. Then they get a do-over, kind of like the beginning, but with bigger stakes. If that's where they're going with it, which is probably where they're going with it, then yeah, the, the payoff is fine. But people, they're not going to come back for part two. They're going to watch this and be like, what the fuck is this? You know, I was looking at this picture, and if you didn't know that it was supposed to be a, a, a guy and a girl, you'd either think it was a, you, you'd think they were reversed, or you'd think it was a girl and another girl. Yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I, I. It's exactly what we thought it was going to be, but in some ways actually worse. The fact that I did not know that Castle Grayskull was going to be an illusion. I'm like, that right there tells me, like, the whole thing is a lie. Everything. The cake is a lie. Everything is a lie. Everything is a lie. But that's why she's mad. That's why she had to go find her truth because she was lied to. Wait, so Tila's allowed to get pissed off because everybody lied to her and act like a whiny bitch. But everybody else is supposed to just accept it. And, and, and even though Kevin Smith lied, like, you know, we're supposed, you know, we're supposed to just accept it because, you know, that's yeah. what, if you were a real fan, you would. Semantics. It's all mm -hmm. semantics. It's, well, I technically didn't lie because that technically technically didn't happen exactly that way. I'm like, well, I was just given the gist of what I was told, and it is actually worse than I thought it was going to be. And it's mostly accurate. Technically. It's mostly accurate. So there it is, guys. Uh, I think it's. I think we're going to see some rage. Um, I'm, I'm tired of raging. I don't really give a shit. It's very easy to dismiss this one as apocrypha because it is clearly not a sequel to Filmation or 2002 He-Man or it's its own thing. But as a Masters fan, if I had gone into this cold, given the way they promote it as being... If we hadn't found out and spilled the beans before. Yeah, I, I would be fucking furious. I'd be like, what the hell did I just watch? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people who aren't following the drama on YouTube are going to be like, what the hell did I just watch? I'm just so tired of it. Stop. Just stop. Stop taking things that are beloved, had years of fans, you know, keeping it going. Uh, diverse fans have mm. always been part of it. We used to be a show run by women. Stop lying for one about what it was and who was involved and you know and, and it was you know all about a chauvinistic man. Stop lying. And two, stop rebooting and changing everything. Make your own damn show. You know what? Get enough talent to make your own thing. Problem solved. No, Kevin Smith makes his own thing. He makes stuff like Tusk. No, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not, I'm just, <laughs> yes. I wasn't making him specifically. I'm just in general. <laughs> like we got Thundercats roar, yeah. and then we got you know, and then in the early 2000s they tried to do this and they did them well. They actually did because in the early 2000s we had people that grew up with these shows, and they were in charge and they they respected the shows. Thundercats 2011 and He Man 2002 are still, as far as I'm concerned, two of the best, if not the best, reboots of 80s franchises. I think 2002 He Man's better than the original. Uh, yeah, I would agree. And with they that. made changes there too. They, they did. They made changes. People were always, you know, hundred percent bored with them, but they still didn't fundamentally change the characters. It was still about He Man. They explained things more. They had origins for a lot of the characters. Evil Lynn, Evil Lynn in two thousand two was a much more nuanced and complex character than the the bitchy ex wife mm -hmm. that we got. Yeah, in this. and and, and Tila too was a better yeah. character. In two thousand two, like it was definitely for boys and girls, and it was a hundred percent that way. And the characters were all like really well done. They got backstories. They got you know they were, go watch that show. I'll tell you, don't waste your time on this one. You want to actually watch a good He Man? Go watch that one because this is absolute shit. 
I mean, it might be, a, it, it, there's some redeeming elements of the story. There's some, if you, if you take it that it's not He-Man, it was another show and it wasn't He-Man, it, it wouldn't be that bad. It'd be kind of interesting. But when you, you keep putting it in the fact that it's supposed to be a He-Man, they're trying to fit a, a square peg into a round hole. It's not going to work because it's not He-Man. Yeah, Squid King put it like this. He's like, so this would be like if you found out the whole plot of, of Spongebob was a lie, that, that Plankton finally gets control of the Krusty Krab, but the Krusty Krab isn't real. And oh, by the way, Spongebob is dead and the show's all that Squidward. I'm like, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah, and his basic boyfriend. And his boyfriend. Yeah, it's basically it. That's basically it. So we're going to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. All right. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.